Hello everyone, welcome to our final host debate interview here at Queensland Youth Parliament, day three of Queensland Youth Parliament. I'm joined by the chair people of the Agriculture and Natural Resources Committee, who just got back from their debate on the Ed Agricultural Education and Technology Enhancement Youth Bill 2020. I'm joined by Jasmine Kendall of Springwood and Tygy Flannery of Stafford. How's it going? Yeah, it's going really well. <laughs> Uh, definitely, I agree with Jasmine, riding a little bit high after we passed the bill and its amendments, but uh, I'm feeling good. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think the, the one thing I've picked up on doing a number of these interviews now is that uh, it can be quite a rush to have been working on this for, a, you know, a good part of a year and then to just all to culminate in this one instance is uh, it's a lot. Um, so you'd be forgiven for having a rush at the moment. Um, That'll be my first question for you. How do you feel about the outcome of the debate today? I'll start with you, Jasmine. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of anticipation because you, you've all talked about it, like the team has uh, kind of gone and written it and brainstormed it and gone through all these processes. And then you finally get to today, which is uh, like the day we get to debate it. And it's super exciting and, uh, and definitely, yeah. Uh, definitely something that I, I appreciate and uh, have been looking forward to for a really long time. Uh, I agree with Jasmine on every one of those points. It's uh, it's disappointing to see it come to a, a closure, but uh, I'm glad that all of our work has paid off. Fantastic. Yeah, it's like you say, yeah, it's great that... Uh, it's it's happened at all. You're able to come here, in, you know, virtually to Parliament and debate this bill. And uh, yeah, it was a really healthy debate. I was listening the entire time. And um, yeah, clearly you've all put so much work into this. Uh, so my first question is about the bill writing or amendment writing process. So I'm interested to know what it was like for both of you to work on this bill. Um, what were some of the complications that uh, you sort of had to face? Um, how did you find working with your committee? And uh, yeah, have you learned anything about sort of the bill writing parliamentary process in doing so? Um, I'll start with the refuting team. Uh, we didn't actually encounter too many uh, roadblocks in our work. Uh, no thanks in small part to uh, Merrin and Brock. They were great mentors. Merrin being a second year and Brock being our committee mentor. They helped a lot in... Uh, centralizing us on what we were meant to be doing. So that was uh, giving us some focus, which was good. Um, the, but yeah, the, there was really no major issues that we encountered. Uh, maybe a couple of ideological imbalances here and there, but uh, those got sorted out quickly because everybody in the refuting subcommittee are great people and their understanding and they are uh, capable of coming together on something, so. It's really fantastic to hear. Um, how about you, Jasmine? How was it like uh, preparing this bill? Did you come across any difficulties or was it it's pretty similar? a completely different playing field to um, any other kind of writing. Youth Parliament writing is um, the structure and everything you have to learn and you have to uh, put your ideas into this format, uh, which is a really, really interesting uh, process. And I think we go from... Uh, it definitely is a process. So you go from like brainstorming and ideas and stuff to writing it to like formatting it. And uh, I think definitely what uh, Tiger was saying with like the people and uh, the committee, it, it just makes it 100% better um, because you're working alongside uh, these people that are just as passionate about you uh, as you um, in this bill. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Yeah, it is a really unique process and uh, I think it's quite unlike uh, anything you might have done. So um, yeah, there's obviously a learning curve there, but uh, you've obviously all, uh, you managed to push through. So that's really fantastic. Uh, my next question is sort of about um, the youth aspects of this bill and of this committee. So I've been really interested to find out why this topic, why the topics that we've discussed here at Queensland Youth Parliament this year have been chosen. Uh, and often I'd like to think about 
what is the youth angle behind these topic choices? Why did you think this needed to be discussed here at Youth Parliament? Do you think there's a perspective that is offered by young people that wouldn't traditionally be offered by, say, the traditional Parliament of Queensland? Um, I'll start with our sponsoring chairperson. Um, why did you think this topic needed to be discussed at Youth Parliament? That's a really interesting question. Um, I think we, at, we as youth always look towards the future and we always uh, are a little bit naive. And Sorry there, Jasmine. It looks like you might have been muted. <laughs> um, I, it, it's a really interesting question because, yeah, I haven't thought about that, but I think we look towards the future um, a bit more than uh, other uh, just uh, people that aren't youth. And um, I think that we chose things that would make the future of agriculture uh, culture better because we are going into that, like that's our future. So we want to make it uh, as good as it can and, and more long-term um, than short-term, I think, is kind of the emphasis that we uh, took on uh, the bill. And when we were talking about it, we thought, how can we make this future for the long term uh, better? Yeah. It's a great answer. Yeah, future proofing uh, totally makes sense. Uh, how about you, Ty? Do you have, um, what is your perspective on why this bill was important? Uh, I just want to start by agreeing with Jasmine on all the points she made because she's exactly right. Uh, different microcosms of people are going to have had faced different challenges, right? And therefore, we're going to have different experiences, different opinions on different subjects. Uh, and that allows us to come together with a myriad of different opinions uh, and form a really cohesive bill, um, which, as Jasmine said, allows us to future proof uh, and allows us to ensure that our future, we will be in a better position than we would have been otherwise. Yes, let's hope so. But uh, yeah, it's a great bill to present. And uh, yeah, you can uh, rest easy knowing that this is being presented to parliamentarians. So this is getting in front of people. And uh, yeah, so great work getting it presented in the first place. Um, my next question is about, obviously this is a debate. There are two subcommittees. One is wanting amendments, one isn't. Uh, for those who obviously weren't able to hear into today's debate, uh, if you could please summarise, uh, what is the main sort of contentious point if you had to sort of pick one uh, between the two subcommittees? Um, I'll start with you, Ty. Like, what, what do you think was the biggest sort of contentious point of this debate? Uh, that's actually a really difficult question because unlike other sub like uh, other committees that definitely had like oppositions where the refuting side totally changed the bill in some aspects uh and that made the sponsoring side quite angry and there was some definitely some discussion about that in other committees like uh the isd committee at sip um had some arguments uh education and training did as well um but uh we uh, our our um, subcommittees didn't really oppose in opinion too much. Uh, none of our amendments that the refuting subcommittee proposed uh, changed the bill in any visionary or idealistic way, really. The core tenets of the bill were maintained uh, by our amendments. Uh, ours was just, our amendments were just clarificatory. They just clarified small things uh, in process and in formality uh, that will make it easier to pass through Parliament. Yes, yeah, uh, I think that's true. If you compare this to other debates, uh, this was, everyone seemed to agree with the general purpose of this bill. It was just about refining the process and clarifying a few things. Um, a question for you, Jasmine, why was the sponsoring side not necessarily opposed to the amendments, but what was their argument for why they shouldn't have been included? Um, well, we mostly agreed with the amendments. I would say if we were to put, uh, resist it or something, there was definitely detail that was taken away. Um, so it's, it's a matter of, um, like clarity and making it clear and everything and also getting your message across and that kind of balance is, um, 
quite interesting to uh, try to do. Yeah, so that would be probably the biggest thing that I'd be like, yeah, cool. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, as you were saying, like this doesn't, it's not necessarily uh, a competitive sort of uh, uh, environment uh, here in Parliament. It was uh, about, yeah, refining the bill in a way that it can be the best possible, you know, piece of legislation. So no, that's fantastic. My final question for both of you, because uh, we'll head off into our parliamentary panel soon, which is very exciting. Uh, I just want to ask both of you quickly, what is your biggest takeaway from being involved in this process, being involved with QIP and the bill writing process? Uh, I'm more than happy to start on that one. Uh, my biggest takeaway is that development of legislation is, uh, specifically the idealisms behind it is uh, not as difficult as I thought it would be. Um, and I, we have the great sponsoring committee to thank for that. Uh, so thank you for providing a wonderful basis for our bill. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I thought it would be considerably more difficult than it was, but everything flowed very smoothly. Uh, and I'm, as I said before, I'm appreciative to every person in the Anarch committee and, uh, specifically Brock and Marin for that and other second years, Mackenzie Bond as well. So Absolutely. No, uh, great mentors, uh, great, great people. Uh, and how about you, Jasmine? Uh, I would say that the, uh, I, I've learnt, I, I, I think I'd say a little bit of the opposite where it's, it's quite complicated, the parliamentary process and, and um, putting your ideas into something that can actually be put into action. Um, it, it, like you have your jurisdictions and then you have your topic and then you have uh, your member, uh, like the parliament members and what their views are and trying to come to a common ground. It's, um, that's probably what I take, uh, one of the things that I take away because it is about a, a lot of communication and stuff and I didn't quite realise how... Um, how many things you had to go through to actually get to a bill that um, works. Uh, yeah, so I found that quite interesting. But I also learnt uh, how great it is to have a committee um, that have people from different areas but also coming together to make one um, goal, uh, one, one bill. Um, that was quite a good experience and something that I've definitely learned from too, hearing everybody's viewpoints as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's clearly uh, a lot of work's been put into this and it has a little bit of everyone's perspective in there, which is fantastic. And you're right, the process can be uh, sort of, it can, it's very structured, it can take a long time, but um, that's just the way it's been designed. It's been that way for many, many years. And uh, yeah, it can be a little hard to sort of jump into that system but you both did a fantastic job um well that's it i want to thank you for doing this interview and i want to congratulate the both of you and your subcommittees uh, on excellent work today you should be really proud of uh, what you've presented here it was an extremely detailed bill and uh like it's an excellent read so great work and um yes just congratulations and i wish you the best um enjoy the rest of your day here at qip thank, thank you, you daniel you.